Good evening, Scotty Reed here with a Black Talk Radio News report and commentary. And I just want to weigh in on this CNN interview that LeVar Ball just did. For those that don't, I can't imagine nobody in the United States doesn't know who LeVar Ball is. But LeVar Ball is basically a shoe salesman. Um, One of his sons just got drafted into the NBA number two overall. Uh, by the Los Angeles Lakers. They are from the Los Angeles area. That is the Ball family, that is. And he's been in the news a lot because of the things that he says. Some people can consider them to be very controversial. He's considered to be a loud mouth, braggadocious type individual. And I've never really paid much attention to LeVar Ball, even though he is a popular media topic, especially on social media. But I've never really watched any interviews that he gave because that type of stuff really doesn't interest me. And But I I was like, okay, I'm I'm a bite. CNN just did a 20-something minute interview with LeVar Ball. Um, his son and one of his sons and two other uh, UCLA, I believe is who they play for, were in China, got picked up for shoplifting. Um, Donald Trump, as well as others, weighed in on it and got the young men released with no charge. They did a little press conference in their press conference. They thanked Donald Trump. Um, Obviously, it seemed like their statements were pre-written, but I mean, they they were what you would expect to hear. Uh, When you get in trouble, you want to see people being humble. You want them to be appreciative of anyone's efforts to get them out of trouble because stealing it is no joke. It's not a joke. And if this had been in Saudi Arabia, a place I spent some time for about six months, they cut people hands off for stealing over there. It's, it's, it's taken very, very, very serious. All right. So, you know, this was in China. Trump made some comments to President Z. President Z um, definitely has some pull in, in the country. And, and the young men were released. So the media played up this big thing about if whether or not LeVar Ball was going to thank Donald Trump and instead of just thanking Donald Trump he was like thank Donald Trump for what so I watched this interview tonight and it was very entertaining and it gave me some insight into LeVar Ball now I've, I've, he's got his fans in the black community then he has his detractors in the black community who say that he's a poor role model um, You know, he's the typical, stereotypical, I should say, stereotypical loudmouth black man. That's why the media puts him on television a lot. And again, I ain't have anything to reference, but I watched that tonight and it kind of gave me some insight into LeVar Ball. LeVar Ball is an entertainer. He's a shoe salesman. He's a businessman. In fact, he is not that much different than Donald Trump the businessman, you know, talks a lot of big talk, braggadocious, boisterous, um, at times says vulgar, controversial things that garner them media attention. So I really see in LeVar Ball and Donald Trump, two peas in a pie. But here is the thing that I take issue with. Why is this news on CNN? Why is it news on MSNBC or ABC or any of these news channels, corporate news outlets that's supposed to be bringing you stories about the serious issues that's going on around the nation, going on around the globe? Now, of course, they'll try to say, well, this involves President Trump and therefore we have to cover it. Well, no, you don't. No, no, you don't, because there's really nothing of of substance there. What you're doing is the same thing, and and specifically CNN is what you did during last year's presidential uh, race, where you showed 
empty podiums <laughs> where Donald Trump was supposed to speak and gave us wall-to-wall -wall coverage 24-7 of Donald Trump. Of course, we found out from emails that uh, the Clinton campaign actually had extra friends in the media to elevate people like Donald Trump, the Pied Piper strategy to elevate people like him uh, so that people would say, see how ridiculous this man sounds, the outrageous things that he says. So Hillary Clinton would be the same choice. But what they didn't count on is people recalling what a psychopath Hillary Clinton was. But CNN, this was a total waste of people's time. It was entertainment. It, it is something that I would expect to see on the WWE, Worldwide Entertainment or Wrestling. What is that World Wrestling Entertainment, that company, which LeVar Ball actually made an appearance at a WWE event. And this beef or quote unquote beef between Donald Trump and LeVar Ball is fake. It's WWE fake. And LeVar Ball being, I must give him credit for being a smart businessman. He took the interview, even though he said, I don't know what people are making a big deal out of. Well, he still took the interview because it gave him an opportunity to talk about his big baller brand, which he brought up a little bit in the middle or towards the end of the interview. And people are buying into this. And, and another sad thing is from the media again is, the so-called black media. And I saw black journalists, black platforms trying to play up a racial angle and say, hey, Donald Trump just attacking LeVar Ball because he sees him as a uppity successful black man. And, and so, you know, that's why he is saying he should have left them boys over there in jail. Now, look, Donald Trump got some serious issues. I don't think it's all an act, as some people would suggest. I, I think he really does have some very serious personality uh, flaws and what have you. But again, uh, LeVar Ball, it, it seems, you know, he isn't serious about beefing with Donald Trump and that was made evident in the video. He, he's an entertainer because at different portions of the interview, he actually sounded like he had some sense, like he was being reasonable. And you could tell when he was in character and when he wasn't in character. And, and again, he was promoting the big baller brand in this CNN uh, interview. And later on, he even started, I guess, throwing a, a what would they call it, an olive branch out there to Donald Trump and saying, hey, Donald Trump's a human being. I'm a human being. Donald Trump ain't never did anything to me. I haven't done anything to him. And I hope Donald Trump tell Donald Trump to have a happy Thanksgiving and what have you. But, you know, you had black people in the media trying to exploit this issue for ratings, basically, for clicks on their website, for for ratings on, on for, you know, TV viewers and, and what have you, and trying to make this a racial issue and saying, you know, Donald Trump, he just loves going after uppity people of color. Donald Trump goes after everybody. <laughs> <laughs> really, that's the truth. White, black, Hispanic, male, female, Republican, Democrat, it doesn't matter. Donald Trump, if he f takes offense to something you say, he's going to say something back to you, whether that's through Twitter, um, whether that's through an interview or whatnot. Donald Trump is, is going to beef with you. That seems to be his default. So, you know, I take issue with those who try to exploit the issue of racism, which is very real in this country, but they take these trivial things and they try to play on your emotions to get you picking sides. Picking sides for what? For this trivial non-news story that CNN devoted 20 minutes to? Again, I ain't got nothing bad to say about LeVar Ball. He's doing what he wants to do, and that is get publicity for his big baller brand. So I can't say anything, uh, you know, about that. He's doing what he does. It was a couple of interesting points in the interview, though. He talked about we shouldn't um, ruin these kids' lives or after one mistake or a stupid mistake and saying how his son has a 
good track record, a clean record, and, and all this. And, and we shouldn't be trying to demonize the, uh, these kids over a stupid mistake. And I agree with him there. But he also talked about when he was a youth, he knows many of his friends who went to prison for life. Talking about the issue of juvenile lifers, even though he didn't bring it up. In that context, he said, well, you know, I know known kids when I was younger and they did things and they went to prison for life, you know, and and that, you know, they but he went into some victim blaming, though, saying that, you know, they they deserve he they, they might have deserved. Well, he didn't say they deserved it, but he insinuated that they deserve to be in prison for life as teenagers, you know. So that's that whole juvenile lifer issue. Um, but again, some of the stuff that he was saying, I think he was in character. Uh, it appears like he was trying to play down, shoplifting, saying it was a victimless crime. No, it's not a victimless crime. Um, the business owner is the victim when you steal uh, from somebody. All right, what's a victimless crime? And I don't even call it a crime, but the government has defined it as a crime, is these ridiculous drug laws that seek to punish grown folks for using certain substances that some people don't approve of. Whether or not they good for you or not is besides the point. I don't think anybody should be going to prison over cannabis, heroin, or anything like that. If anything, they should be getting some help. We should be providing resources for these people to get off these drugs and not throw them into prison. But of course, we have a system of prison slavery in this country. Slavery was never abolished. Read the 13th Amendment, which also is a good time for me to segue to also point out that you had 900 teenagers file a lawsuit two years ago over teen prison rape after being raped by either adult prisoners or being raped by Guards And this lawsuit was filed two years ago, and I did a report on it um, a couple of days ago, and I'm going to continue to use every opportunity I can to, to highlight this issue because guess who's not? CNN is not. MSNBC is not bringing this story to your attention. And you say, well, it's two years old. Well, no, the court case just recently went to the appeals court where they will decide whether or not these teenage victims of prison rape have any constitutional rights. Because, after all, the 13th Amendment says that they are slaves, all right? Because what does the 13th Amendment say? Slavery and involuntary servitude shall be abolished except as punishment for a crime where the person has been duly convicted. So that is actually the argument of lawyers for the state of Michigan who are seeking not to pay damages to these victims of rape that occurred on their watch while these teenagers was under their control and in their custody and their argument is slaves don't have rights. And I've been told by people that I know have worked in the media or, or you know, had some exposure to the behind the scenes. They say, well, sometimes, you know, they don't get it, get the stories as fast as what y'all do on the Internet. You know, you independent journalists that are based on the Internet, y'all are really way ahead of corporate media. And I'll buy that. But they say the cycle is usually, they're usually like 24 to 48 to 72 hours behind us but this is a story that is two years old is when the original lawsuit was filed and it's just now reaching the appeals court and i have not seen one second of coverage by cnn msnbc abc i mean pick go ahead and pick a corporate outlet and that's tragic that's very tragic because guess what they're more they're more interested in entertaining you with stories of LeVar Ball's fake WWE beef with Donald Trump. All right, this has been Scotty Reed with a Black Talk Radio News Report. 
in commentary reminding you that the Black Talk Media Project is a U.S.-based nonprofit. We manage the Black Talk Radio Network, a independent media platform bringing you black voices to black audiences. And you can make support our efforts by making a donation today to the nonprofit Black Talk Media Project.